Welcome to the final installment of Rocket Home, a series that aims to make getting started with network security monitoring hardware and concepts more approachable, starting by looking at your own home network data. In previous episodes, we talked about what a network sensor is, the core components that make up ROC, how ROC NSM is different from other security distros, and the basic topology for network spanning and tapping. We also covered the steps to install the base OS, configuration examples, and finally deploy ROC using the Ansible playbook. In this final video, let's take that forward and talk about the basics of operating and maintaining your sensor. The best way to follow up a clean install of ROC is to do a functions check. This includes verifying that you're getting a feed of data to your monitoring interfaces and checking the current status of all the primary ROC services. In the previous video, we talked about ROC configuration in Etsy ROC NSM config.yaml. Among many other options, this is where you define what network interfaces will be used as monitoring or listening interfaces. After running deployment, these settings can be confirmed by using the command IP space A and validating that the monitor interfaces are in promiscuous mode and do not currently have an IP address. We can take things a bit further and do a temporary dump of the live packets on an interface using TCP dump. I'll type sudo TCP dump give it a count of packets that will be displayed, and dash i specifying the interface. This displays all traffic on that interface to standard out. If you don't see any noise here, you know to check the data stream before it gets into ROC. If you're generally familiar with system D, you'll know that the command used to manage services on a modern system is systemctl. With ROC, we've provided a wrapper to control services called rockctl. ROC control works in bulk to start, stop, clear the failed states of services, and display the status of ROC components. Let's run ROC CTL status and demonstrate a key point involving Stenographer, which is our solution for raw packet capture. You'll notice a few things in this output. Number one, the current state of all the services, and two, that there are multiple entries for Stenographer. To clarify this, Stenographer will have a child process for every interface that it uses to capture traffic. Let's make sure that ROC services are up and running by issuing the command sudo rockctl start. And then follow with a status to validate everything is running. Once we know that we've got data coming into a sensor and that all the things are up and running, we can finally get into that fantastic interface that is Kibana. With the latest version of ROC, Kibana is served over a TLS connection and is secured with a username and passphrase generated a la XKCD. The username and passphrase is saved to a file in the home folder of the user created at install, for example, slash home slash admin. To get into Kibana, grab these credentials in kibanacreds.readme, point your browser to HTTPS sensor IP, and enter the credentials. Kibana is the web interface that's part of the Elastic Stack. It's a very efficient way to sort and filter through network data, and it's really worth investing time into mastering this interface. Once in Kibana, we can start understanding what the actual sources of data are by looking at index patterns. In ROC NSM, the primary two data sources are already set up with bro logs and Suricata alerts with the flexibility to add more, including FSF for file scans. For more information on Kibana, check out Elastic's official Kibana user guide. Docket is a new feature in version 2.2 and provides a web interface for an analyst to request very specific slices of PCAP in order to do more targeted analysis. These queries can be made by filtering out traffic based on things like time frame, hosts, ports, and more. I'll start off demonstrating Docket by showing a saved search in Kibana. This is for a specific time frame, and I'm looking at traffic originating from the .101 host and responding over port 443. Once I've decided what I want to filter on, I can pivot to Docket to carve out a specific piece of PCAP, heading over to the sensor IP slash app slash Docket slash. Let's look at the interface. The sidebar shows the tab to make queries and also the jobs tab that shows a history of requests that can be referenced later. Choosing the time frame and ports or protocols, however granular you want to get, the overall state shows that the job completed, and I can then download that PCAP locally to dig into things using your weapon of choice, such as Wireshark. 
Rock is designed to keep the user's focus on analysis rather than wrench turning, but sometimes you have to make sure you're keeping your house in order. For the scope of this video, we'll focus on some of the high points of maintaining Rock. Let's rewind a bit. When first booting to Rock Media, there are two install choices, automated and custom. I want to point out that the automated install is intended as a starting point to get into things. A custom install is encouraged for a more serious or production environment in order to get more granular in choosing how disk space is allocated. A common issue occurs when you want to have full packet capture with stenographer, but do not give it its own mount point. Steno is great at managing its own disk space by beginning to overwrite things at 90% capacity, but that doesn't quite cut it when it's sharing the same partition as Bro, Suricata, and other things like FSF. Best practice would be to create a slash data slash stenographer partition during a custom install in order to prevent things like Elasticsearch rightfully locking things up to a read-only state in order to keep the ship from crashing hard. Another useful partition to create is slash var slash log to separate system log files. Let's wrap up this maintenance section with a quick note on Suricata rules. Much like our personal devices, notifications and alerts can quickly move from informative pieces of information to just plain unhelpful noise. This is true with IDS alerting. All these settings can be found at slash Etsy slash Suricata. False positives combined with unneeded rule sets and classifications can make things overwhelming. So be sure to look at how Suricata is configured out of the box and tuned to provide value to your specific environment. So that wraps things up for this Rock at Home series, and hopefully it answers a lot of questions and breaks down some barriers for people to invest the time and start learning all things NSM. We've covered a lot of topics that are often standalone courses, and it's expected to have follow-on questions and problems that need to be solved. Your first stop should be the official documentation found at rocknsm.io. And please join our community support site at community.rocknsm.io. Rock is an open source project and always will be. We couldn't be more grateful to our community of users and contributors. We're continually moving the project forward, so be sure to follow at RockNSM on Twitter for the latest updates. Thanks for your time and rock on.